All right. I don't know what's been going on for the last few months, but the watch world has just been crazy. I don't, I don't really do news updates when it comes to watch releases, but I'm just so excited about all of these that I thought I'll just make this uh, short video and give you a few updates. So the first one is the one that you probably heard about on almost every channel, which is the Tudor Pelagos. Just a few months ago, Tudor released the new Ranger. It had a bit of mixed reactions. I didn't personally love it too much. Yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't too excited about it, but recently they released the new 39 millimeter Pelagos. Again, everybody's going crazy about it. Some people might just say, oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal and, you know, it's a bit overhyped and all of that stuff. But I do understand that Pelagos is a very unique piece in terms of its position in the Tudor catalog. There's only one dive watch all this time, right? The Black Bay 58, but it's a very specific design. It's it it's a more of a dressy dive watch than a tool watch than a very utilitarian tool watch. It doesn't come off as a very purposeful watch. But the Pelagos, on the other hand, is Tudor's response to that. It's the, their second dive watch, which is more utilitarian. It's more, you know, no nonsense. It's basically function over form, whereas with the Black Bay 58, it's form over function. I mean, I love the titanium. I love the design, but my only issue with that, with this watch, the 200 meters water resistance. I, I mean, I know it's like 100 meters is enough for most of us, right? It's fine. You don't need more than that. But just to separate it from the Black Bay 58, which is also 200 meters, I feel that if they had released this model in 300 meters, that would perfectly place it between the 42 millimeter, 500 meter water resistance and the 200 meters Black Bay. Right now, what's happening is that on one hand, we have a Pelagos and on the other hand, we have the 58 like it's not enough to win them over because spec wise on paper um their their performance is <clears throat> quite similar next let's talk about the new h moser streamliner and this is a very exciting release for me i'm not i'm not gonna get it but it's still good to see h moser utilize their venta black dial to be honest i didn't like any other streamliner model that much. I've never been able to get on board with the dials. I still like H. Moser's classic Venture or the Pioneer line. Those to me are H. Moser and the streamliner is a bit, it's a bit different. What I do like about this line is that every other sports watch with integrated bracelet, whether it's high end or entry level, they're all following that AP Royal Oak 70s trend. You know, the Gerald Genta era of uh, integrated bracelets. But when you look at the Streamliner, it's completely different. The Streamliner from H. Moser and the Bulgari Octo Finissimo, these two are modern takes on the integrated bracelet design. And this watch, I am loving this watch. 40 millimeter watch case, 72 hours of power reserve, 120 meters of water resistance, and an in-house movement with a tourbillon. It's it's crazy expensive being a Venta Black and then being a tourbillon and a case made of gold, so approximately $112,000. Nice watch. Now let's, you know, come back, come down to a slightly more entry-level arena. Seiko SRPJ41 and SRPJ43. In all honesty, looking at the GMT, Sports KX, whatever you want to call it, this is the coolest release under the Seiko 5 line yet. Every single thing about this watch, I love. The fact that this amazing design made in collaboration with Kusuke Kawamura, who's a Japanese artist, I think they're doing something amazing here. They need a bit of color, they need something a bit different, and it doesn't get more different than this. If you don't want to spend $112,000 on a H. Moser Venta Black, this is the perfect affordable alternative for you. Boulder Singularity. And the only difference between these two, H. Moser's Venta Black 
it absorbs 99.96% of light. Whereas Boulder's black dial, it absorbs 99.4% of light. I don't think that you would be able to tell the difference personally, but the fact that they've been able to do this and create the blackest material on earth, it's absolutely insane. $450. I feel that they are an excellent tool watch, like the most rugged modern field watch, contemporary field watch that you can find today at an affordable price. I think Boulder is the best value that you can find. This is a very, very new brand, and I'm sure that most of you may not have heard about it. This watch brand has a very interesting story. It's a very unique watch, the most unique watch at this price point that you will find. This watch is designed by a young architecture student, and it's inspired by the golden ratio. During my first year, we learned about the golden ratio and its use in architecture and its use in nature and product design and all of those kind of things. And we, I think we even used it in our semester projects. You're getting a Salida Swiss movement, automatic, beautiful finishing, hacking and hand winding, 100 meters of water resistance, 45 by 25 millimeter. That's a very odd case size. It looks really nice. It's only 11.1 millimeters thick. Domed sapphire crystal with AR coating, diamond cut hands and applied numerals. And I have been in touch with Bettina herself. I, I would love to have her on the channel and just try to explore, try to understand the thought process behind this design and you know what got her into this because I haven't really seen too many architects in watchmaking. I do really find a lot of similarities between watches and architecture. You know, Jung Hans and Nomos and architecture is so much more than that. I mean, look at these guys. This is what crazy architecture looks like. Symbolic, it's rebellious, it's a statement, it's contextual, it's political. There's just so much innovation and craziness. When people reduce architecture to Bauhaus, you know, this very minimalist style, like, no. These watches, to me, speak very close to architecture. This is the Sega design. By far, this is the craziest watch that you can find at this price point. I mean, everything else we've seen, they still look like watches. This does not look like a watch. I literally don't understand how to tell the time on this thing, and that is saying something. It's not easy to create a timepiece today where you have to go back and learn how to tell the time on this piece. There aren't that many doing that. And not just that, this is the first Chinese watch company to win a GPHG award. That's a huge deal. And I have been looking at some of their other designs. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of them. You know, that Richard Mille, Hublot, skeleton dial, large case kind of thing. But if you look at the specifications and you look at the performance of these watches, it's quite impressive. I feel that Sega design is placing itself as the Xiaomi or the Huawei of the watch world. They're trying to move away from the Chinese made fashion brands into well-established, affordable, yet high performance, creative, innovative watches. But yeah, I am gonna get this watch soon, uh, probably next week. Definitely check out Red Army watches. You can use a discount code, Abdullah Chang, full caps during checkout and you will get 10% discount on any watch, whether it's on sale or it's at retail. And yeah, they do international shipping, so you don't have to worry about that. If you can't find a watch in your country, you can get it from them and they're gonna ship it out. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.